Okay, it's seven o'clock, and so I'll call the meeting to order. Um, could we have a roll call? Uh, I don't know, Lily, if you're going to do it or Kevin. Uh, I will as soon as I find my forms. Okay, there okay. we go. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Allred. Here. Uh, Ms. Billman. Here. Mr. Fell. Here. Mr. Fitch. Here. Mr. Hopkins. Here. Mr. Weisskopf. And Ms. Yu. Here. All right, we do have a quorum. Um, are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, there are none. Great. Uh, we have the minutes. Uh, we have two sets of minutes for the November 5th, 2020 Plan Commission regular meeting and the November 24th, 2020 special meeting. Um, I'm okay with moving these together. Um, if, if, if we're hearing no objection. Okay. Um, does anybody uh, want to make a motion? I'll move that we approve the minutes of the last two meetings. Motion by Mr. Hopkins. I'll second. Second by Mr. Fell. Any uh, changes to the minutes or discussion? In that case, can we have a roll call vote, please? Uh, Ms. Yu? Yes. Mr. Allred? Yes. Ms. Billman? Yes. Mr. Fell? Yes. Mr. Fitch? Yes. And Mr. Hopkins? Yes. All right, the minutes are approved. Um, do we have any communications? I'm not aware of any. We do not. Okay, we don't have a continued public hearing. We don't have old business. We don't have a new public hearing. We don't have new business. I don't believe we have an audience. Um, the only attendee is our crew. Uh, and so um, we'll go right into a staff report if there is one. Um, I don't have my agenda in front of me. Is this where we talk about the comprehensive plan? Uh, that's next. Okay. <laughs> oh, staff report. Um, so the uh, the PUD case that you forwarded to the council with the recommendation, or, or the two PUD cases, I should say, um, that were forwarded to council um, went to, or rather went to committee of the whole this past Monday. Um, they chose to um, forward it to council with no recommendation until the uh, design review board Here's the, the related case. Um, so the, the PUDs will not be, um, you know, will not be completed at council until that case goes through the design review board. Ms. Billman? Any idea when it goes to the design review, review board? So yeah, great question. So we are waiting on an application. I know the, the applicant is, um, is excited to get in to get that application in uh, as soon as possible. Um, and I think the soonest that we could hold that meeting would be the first week of January. So probably, I believe the, the two dates we're looking at are the 5th or the 6th. Great, thank you. Any further questions on that? Nope, Mr. Uh, Garcia, anything else? Staff report? Yeah, um, so I think just one other item between last plan commission and this plan commission. Um, Lily Wilcock, who is on the call here, took the uh, AICP exam, which is the exam that uh, planners take to become certified. So it's a professional uh, accreditation, if I said that right. <laughs> and Lily passed. So, uh, so very, very soon she'll be able to use those, uh, those four letters after her name. Um, I believe it's, uh, you know, after you pay the few hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. I wasn't expecting that. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everybody. Oh, you're welcome. Well done. You're going to have to get new business cards. So. <laughs> um, all right. Can we so, use business card right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> So, um, all right, Any, anything further, Mr. Garcia? Um, no, that, that sums it up. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, in that case, now we have a study session which is going to focus on the comprehensive plan. Um, and I, so I presume we'll have a presentation 
Uh, I presume it be, will be Ms. Wilcock since she's here. Um, and uh, so take it away. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah. Sorry, Kevin, please. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, I'm going, I was gonna, gonna give some opening. Preamble? Uh, just some, okay. some opening remarks and then, and then lead into it. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so I think, I think we've probably discussed this with Plan Commission uh, a bit, and I think maybe with, you know, some of the, some of the cases that we've heard over the years, we kind of see that, that the current plan, which dates from 2005, um, you know, it has a lot of great elements. Um, it includes, you know, it really includes goals and objectives in many different areas, um, economic development, the environment, parks and open space, um, and many more. Um, but it's kind of been showing its age um, for, for a little while. Um, and, you know, let's face it, uh, 2020, uh, the world of 2020 is, is a lot different than that of 2005, even though it seems like a pretty short time ago. Um, you know, even without the excitement of a, of a global pandemic this year, which nobody really could have predicted, or, or maybe they could, I don't know, epidemiologists. Um, but, you know, so events like the 2008 recession um, happened between that plan, I mean, almost immediately after that plan was adopted. Um, we also lost more than 10% of our tax revenue uh, since that plan was adopted. Um, there's, you know, there's probably a lot of other other things that happened that kind of necessitate um, a new a new comprehensive plan for us to to really guide our our planning efforts for the next decade or two. Um, so, the goal for this new plan is to be truly comprehensive um, to really tie together. Um, different, you know, all the different elements that, you know, many of them are present in the 2005 plan. Um, but I think the, the idea is to, to better integrate those um, into a, a truly comprehensive plan and not just, not just another, um, you know, land use plan, but something truly comprehensive. Um, also to be, um, to be more equitable I think that's our, our main goal is to really, really uh, make this plan um, equitable and to get, you know, to get input from folks who normally, you know, might not have their voices heard during, um, during a comprehensive planning process. Um, and I know that, you know, I know people probably say that's the goal for all of their comprehensive plans. Um, but we, we really are striving for that. And we, you know, we want to be held, held accountable for making that happen. And, and we want it to happen because we want this plan to be truly representative of the people of Urbana. Um, so due to, uh, really due to the importance of the, the comprehensive plan as a tool that guides us um, that guides the city's future policies and decisions. Um, the city has allocated resources for two full-time staff members, including one new hire. Um, and they are the ones who will be presenting tonight. Um, they're Andrea Rudy, um, who I'm really excited to introduce, um, along with Lily Wilcock, who needs no introduction. Um, and Andrea, so Andrea is leading our comprehensive planning effort. Um, she brings a just a wealth of management experience to the city. Um, most recently, she was the president and the CEO of Fox Development Corporation over in Champaign. Um, and I'm very happy that we poached her for our comprehensive planning efforts. <laughs> um, so tonight, Andrea and Lily will give you uh, sort of an overview of their efforts to date, um, sort of you know, and, and what the process will be going forward. Uh, but most importantly, we really want to get your feedback as the plan commission um, and, you know, help us, uh, you know, give us feedback, help us move the process along, uh, give us ideas for, you know, for making things better um, so we can make this, as I said, truly comprehensive. Um, so, uh, Andrea and Lily, please take it away. Okay, well, we're gonna share a screen here. And 
are, is everyone able to see the screen? Terrific. Um, well, thank you so much for this opportunity to uh, share with you what Lily and I have been working on these past few months behind the scenes to get ready for the launch of the comprehensive plan. And we're excited to be able to uh, hear your feedback and uh, incorporate the ideas that you have into the comprehensive plan as well. But we'll just share some of the things that we've been working on. Uh, first of all, I don't need to tell this group uh, what the comprehensive plan is, but we're preparing slides that are going to help us communicate with other community partners and groups in, in Urbana. So we do need to share with them what a plan does. And you're well familiar, as, as Kevin laid out, that the plan really does guide the city's policies and uh, decision making going forward. And as he also mentioned, we're really making this plan um, maybe broader than what's traditional in a city comprehensive plan and that we really want to hit on all aspects of life in Urbana. And so you'll see in this second paragraph here, areas like arts and culture, you know, that's a big part of Urbana and it makes us very unique. And so that's something we definitely want to include as well as the more traditional aspects of the plan, you know, transportation, land use, housing, et cetera. So the process um, I met or I prevented, provided a roadmap to council uh, right at the very beginning of the process. It just outlines the steps of going through a, what the traditional planning process is uh, for, the, for a comprehensive plan. But the one thing that we wanna point out is that our plan, as Kevin just said also, is it's centered around extensive community engagement. And you'll see that as Lily and I uh, share some other details with you uh, this evening, but that we really are trying to reach all populations in Urbana so that everybody has a voice. And then the process then, we have no preconce preconceived ideas of what this plan is gonna look like uh, because we're, it's gonna be an organic process coming out of the community engagement. So the themes that evolve um, out of the engagement will be the themes that we focus on and then delve into deeper with probably focus groups and, and additional surveys. So community engagement will be uh, carried on throughout this process, but the initial launch of community engagement will take place uh, here in the first quarter uh, as soon as January in 2021. So we've developed some branding. This is one of the activities we had and we uh, tapped into our uh, graphics and design people within the city, uh, some people outside of the city to help us in selecting a graphic designer. And she came from Urbana and she's also uh, works at the University of Illinois. And so we were delighted to, first of all, for her selection. And then uh, the design she came up with were also um, vetted through a panel. And this is the design that they came up with. So the name for our comprehensive plan process is called Imagine Urbana, which we think is, is totally fitting to envision what our city is going to look like in the next 20 years. So nice, bright colors, uh, doesn't look uh, probably like a, a city type website, but this will be the branding that we use for all of our engagement materials, uh, the website that Lily's been working on uh, very viciously the last uh, few weeks, <laughs> and, uh, but it uh, looks great and we're, we'll be delighted to be able to show you that in the future as well. So uh, we've also been working on just the framework and the engagement tools that we'd like to use in the comprehensive plan process. And uh, Kevin already covered some of these things, uh, you know, allocating staff resources. Uh, we've also uh, developed a staff working group to help us steer the process, give us feedback along the way and guidance. And also uh, Lily has developed a staff data group to gather and, and interpret data. And this, the form of, um, gathering data is going to take a little bit little bit different direction and I credit that to Lily and that we're going to take more of a storytelling approach with our data and Lily could you just expand on that I mean she's done so much work on this and uh, it's really uh, going to be integral to our uh, comprehensive plan process. Well, and, and actually a lot of staff have. That's um, what we're trying to do here rather than um, your traditional um, hire out another firm for the plan. We're really trying to really rely on some of our experts within the city. So the city of Urbana collects on data from all sorts of different corners across many different departments. Um, the data is difficult to use. It's, um, it's collected from the police department, fire, uh, public works, 
community development has many, many data sets. You can see some of them on the open data portal, and you can also see, if you just download it tonight, some of the big, huge problems, glaring problems from just using some of that information. So this data team, um, staff, we've got all sorts of different people um, from arts and culture to sustainability, um, looking and taking a look and working up together and trying to provide a better and more complete picture of Urbana by Urbana. Um, but we're, we're really, this data process isn't going to get started until we have this first initial, initial phase of community engagement. We want community engagement to kind of inform the direction we go with that data, um, rather than um, uh, really pulling together uh, secondary, primary, you know, secondary sources of information that just kind of show you what a census track or, or an industry is doing in Urbana. We're really trying to rather have particular, <laughs> we're really trying to start with those kinds of questions and feedback that we get and put together the story, collect the data that we do have um, clean it up and then tell the story about what, where, who we are at Urbana, where do we get here. Um, and so that's something that is um, kind of cross-departmental um, process that we're, we've got going and we're starting right now. Thank you, Lily. And uh, this is, like I said, very exciting. We can't wait for the, the product to roll out on this. And, and as Lily said, it will be a little bit down the road once we have our uh, first launch of the community engagement phase. Some of the other things, as you'll see on this, uh, this slide, um, we're, we plan to have informative videos throughout this process. So it'll be on topics of interest uh, that relate back to the plan. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more uh, on another slide about our first video series. Um, we are also looking at a texting tool. This is something Lily has done a lot of research on. And the reason for this texting tool, um, you know, with the pandemic, you know, that has forced us to find different ways to communicate. We can't do in-person meetings. So in a way, the, the, the uh, pandemic has actually been beneficial to us because it's already opened people to the idea of not communicating in person, how else can we do that? So many people are already per, already uh, participating in webinars, Zoom calls, et cetera, but not everybody has access to a computer. And we realize that, uh, but most people do have a telephone. It, may not, it doesn't even have to be a smartphone in order to, be, to have texting. And so some of our surveys will be done via text so that we can get uh, additional communication. We've also been working on the website, uh, Lily in particular, and as far as doing the mechanics of the site. And we just got a preview today and it's turning out awesome. We can't wait to roll that out in January um, so that the website we'll talk a little bit more about. And then again, I just talked about the, just trying to give everyone a voice. And so we've, we're reaching out to community partners and we've already started that process just because of the way the calendar runs on these meetings. We wanna make sure that uh, we're starting to reach out in advance of the, of the launch for community engagement. So these community partners will help us in reaching different audiences. So we've de developed quite a list and you can see that coming up. Uh, the list keeps growing. Uh, these are some of the groups that we've identified. And we're also getting some help from, we have a uh, student intern that will be starting with us in January. And she comes from Urbana High School's Executive High School program, uh, has some uh, great background and she will be instrumental in helping us re reach the youth population and also working with social media. Uh, we've also are delighted to be able to be part of um, the um, uh, urban planning department and a coursework that uh, one of our own is leading, uh, Dr. Allred, and he's providing a, a class for students, graduate students this spring that will focus on increasing equitable participation, engagement, and participation in the comprehensive plan process. And we couldn't be more delighted to be able to have students at that level uh, devoted to reaching out to our community. Um, and so this list, as I said, keeps growing. It'll change as we go along, as we meet with more community partners. I'm sure we'll identify other groups that can help us uh, reach out into the community. So this, I mentioned about our video series and the first one that we've, we've already recorded, we're getting the data um, uh, assimilated so that it can be put onto the website. And um, the first series is really based on educating people about the government agencies and government bodies 
that serve our community. So we took the various taxing bodies that are in, uh, in Urbana or that receive Urbana property taxes and we had each one of the executive directors of those agencies tell us about their agency, tell us how it's funded, its mission, its goals, and how it's governed. And so it's really um, helpful information. We think people can tune into that if they wanna know more about their city. And it's something that can be on the, on the website, even the city's website long-term. And uh, we do have a sample of that that we're gonna be showing um, hopefully to council on Monday night. Uh, after we have this presentation, it'll follow up with a presentation to council this Monday. So our timeline uh, going forward, really the, the main launch of the community engagement, as we mentioned, will take place this spring. Uh, broad outreach, educational events. As again, uh, we just had a meeting today, again, with the Arts and Culture Council last night, followed up with them today. They've got some great events coming up that we can be part of. Uh, events are gonna look different, uh, not necessarily in person. Hopefully we'll still be able to have the Urbana uh, market, market in the Square that can be in person. We can hopefully have a table there with social distancing, but some of the traditional events we won't be able to do in person, but we'll find ways to do them online and find fun ways to interact with them. And then we'll be taking then uh, after the, that first initial phase, then we'll be hopefully getting these themes that become um, evident in all the feedback that we receive. And uh, then having focus groups that we refine and get additional public feedback. So our goal is to have a preliminary report to the plan commission later this year, and then the plan commission then making that recommendation to the city council. So that's kind of our time frame. Um, I think I missed a bypassed one slide on the website, and this is where I want Lily to give some uh, additional background. Uh, she's been working uh, very hard on this website, and some of the tools that we have in here, Lily, would you like to go over just uh, some of the basic tools that we have and, um, you know, some of the feedback that we hope to receive that way? Yeah, and I, and I hope we're not, we're not, um, I hope you're just as impressed as Andrea is when you see it next time, uh, next month. Um, so what we're working on right now is we're trying to really prioritize a handful of things. Um, you know, as we all know, there's a lot on the um, that we're bombarded with every day and this engagement process for being a government agency and a local government agency at that is going to be something that's going to be challenging to get grab, grab people's attention and time. Um, so we've got a couple of um, core tools that we're really trying to implement with the website. Um, one would be an ideal wall where people can post, um, they can also post pictures, people can upvote other things, they can tag it with different kinds of um, kind of themes that are, that are um, comprehensive plan related. Um, there is kind of a, a third party moderation that goes with that. So, you know, if you're worried about um, someone posting something inappropriate or an image that's inappropriate, then we'll try to get that as fast as possible. Um, there's a, we'll have a short survey. Now we're really trying to um, get as much and as broad feedback. So it, it will be short. We're going to start with this really broad engagement process um, really early on in the planning process. Um, and that will be really compiled for that report later on in the summer. Um, an interactive map. So we're going to be using a, um, a really neat tool. It's actually a platform that I really enjoy, um, a JavaScript based mapping uh, tool that that allow you to place a pin um, and kind of tag what you like about that place. You also can upload a photo for that as well. Um, we, those videos that we've been talking about, it's going to be just one of many series. Um, part of, gener of having anything online is to, to generate some traffic and um, so we're going to be using those videos not only to, for educational purposes but also releasing them so we can keep generating people um, traffic to the website, traffic to social media pages, traffic to um, co-events, so webinars and um, events that we're, we're co-sponsoring with different organizations in the community. Uh, we're not really trying to be our own um, draw, our own circus, or our own attraction. We're really trying to tag along to everybody else because it's really Urbana, the community that we're, we're talking to. And I think it, it's also, 
couldn't just be another night of Zoom meetings for other for people of Urbana. Um, that will eventually lead into other quick features like quick polls, um, webinars. Um, what we're going to start up a, a class um, form on there for for people who want to participate and learn more and do a deeper dive on certain topics and for the comprehensive plan. And then, of course, there's going to be many different opportunities for for keeping people engaged if they opt into. So whether that's the sec, the texting SMS survey or it's the, um, the email newsletter. So um, now we're talking a lot about digital tools like texting and the website, but there's also many other, which also just briefly, there's gonna be postcard writing campaign. There's gonna be yard signs and a billboard for the texting. There's gonna be some walking um, events. So we're, we're really trying to reach as much as we can do safely, um, but also try to tag along with other groups as well. That's, that's the website. Yeah. And so, and, and really that's, uh, you know, what we would like to present to you tonight and uh, really looking forward to the feedback that you have to us and suggestions that you might have on how we can, uh, you know, additionally improve the process. And so we're excited to be able to have this opportunity and, um, you know, would love to field questions. Well, thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions uh, for Andrea or uh, Lily? Um, I just really want to think. Oh, oh sorry. Go ahead, Lily. Then we'll yeah, go uh, ahead. Well, just really quickly, um, we'll send out those slides to everybody at the end of this presentation. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Mr. Allred. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious about just kind of the timing. Will the the public engagement is going to start right in January to June timeframe? Um, will there? And you mentioned maybe the data sort of background conditions still being in progress. Um, will there be some amount of kind of background information, an explanation of what, not only what the comprehensive plan is in a traditional sense, but what you're imagining the comprehensive plan is in this more comprehensive sense, right? That, that integrates a lot of um, what are typically included as separate elements into I guess a bigger kind of holistic vision. Um, well, all of that, you know, not not to say that it's like um, an educational piece, but something that explains, you know, what it is that people that we're asking people to think about. Um, Yes, uh, yeah. to answer okay. that, and uh, we didn't go into that level with you guys because all of this commission, of course, knows what a plan is and what uh, what the purpose of that is. But um, yes, we've got uh, a couple of ways that we're communicating that. Uh, the website, of course, and uh, we on the very front page of the website, there's a, a tab for about Imagine Urbana. So they click on that. They can get a text version, a short and brief text version of what a comprehensive plan is and what we what we want to achieve via our community engagement and we also have a video um, our video uh, features Lamon Peppers who is our new outreach uh, coordinator for the city of Urbana and so he he says verbally you know what it is um, he's got a great rapport and we're delighted to have somebody that actually has some uh, uh, Lily, I'll use the word charisma. <laughs> so it's not Lily and I, it's somebody that, that you know, can, can really uh, communicate and get that message across. So uh, definitely there's some education involved in that. And that's why then, as Lily mentioned, you know, having these different tools ongoing throughout the engagement process uh, where people can, uh, can learn on different topics, et cetera. And one other, I'm, I'm gonna have Lily uh, add some things as well. But one other thing I just wanted to mention is that uh, this first six months that we talked about is really the first phase of community engagement. Community engagement will be out throughout the whole process. If you remember the roadmap, uh, the different uh, curves in the road, every time we, we change to something else in the plan, we're then going back and getting feedback from, uh, from the community on that. So um, the data part will be part of that, but also uh, when those themes start bubbling up, we wanna go back to people and those that that are interested in those particular themes, 
we want to reach out to them and give us get us more information and do a deeper dive and get better feedback. Uh, so that's what is really going to guide our our comprehensive plan going forward. So Lily, please please add to that. Yeah, well, I, that you you covered the the so we have Lamont Peppers, who's our engagement coordinator, and he's really um, going to try to break down what is a comprehensive plan for the Urbana, but also I'll go dip a little bit into um, why someone should fill out the comprehensive plan or participate in the comprehensive plan with us um, in a very brief video, which we've, we're we're going to get it under two minutes. I promise everybody. Um, that also to what Andrea said is that this first um, this first engagement process is really to set up. Um, it's going to be compiled into a participation report. We hope that that really helps us um, craft a vision and also some some themes going forward for the comprehensive plan. Um, but then that doesn't mean that it stops. There's going to be um, going back to the drawing table, focus groups, and other different and wherever we're at with our um, with safety protocols with the pandemic we're going to start reevaluating and, and kind of dipping in further and deeper into getting more of people of Urbana's thoughts and opinions on more specific topics. Yeah, I mean, that's, that all sounds great. I, I guess what I was asking is, and you kind of said it there, um, getting people's thoughts and opinions. And so whether or not those are informed thoughts and opinions, I guess, like, I think, you know, on the commission, we hear a lot of, of comments from the public that represent perceptions about, you know, what they think is going on. And I think sometimes it would be useful to have just kind of a baseline of background conditions so that people understand, you know, what are the housing needs in particular neighborhoods, you know, and, and those kinds of things that would help sort of clarify, um, you know, what, what the current situation is that we're trying to improve on, right? Something like that. So yeah, I get it's like, it's a, you know, multiple points of engagement and then refining this as you go. But I think it might be useful to have some amount of this sort of baseline information out there initially to some groups um, so that they have, you know, good information to be making decisions on and, and commenting about. Yeah, and, and just to quickly um, respond to that, you know, I did say that we're going to be partnering with people as much as possible, but I, I need to put a little asterisk there. So there's um, two things. There's, you know, many partners, for instance, in housing, there's partners in the community who are also seeing a lot of these same comments and they want to have the same educational process, partnering with them and having these conversations with the community. And then the second thing is we are planning on having you know, having guest speakers and setting up kind of a an online education area. So we're talking to people, engaging pe with people who want to kind of dive a little bit deeper into these issues, learn more about Urbana, Urbana housing issues, for instance, and one could be one topic, learn about what equity role uh, plays in that role, resilience plays in that role, um, the future, and then having, you know, guest speakers. And so that there's, there are some things that we're planning on doing. Um, the details and those partners haven't been completely hashed out yet. Um, so I'm glad you, <laughs> I know I said that we're not going to have our own events, but we might have a couple. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. And to address, uh, you're right. There, we don't want to filter out comments. We want to hear everybody's comments. And you're right, some people are not going to be as informed on various issues and may even have misinformation. And so, it's good for us to find that out that, okay, there is a misconception about whatever this is, issue might be. And then we can use, as Lily said, you know, our uh, panels that we have on different topics and they can address and maybe clear up some of those misconceptions. But we do really wanna have a, like panels of experts that can talk about these issues. But first we need to find out, yeah, what, what are people thinking? Uh, where are those, where do we need to educate them more about, about things that are happening? Um, but we wanna be fully transparent. So we're not gonna screen out those um, maybe comments that aren't on point or maybe, you know, not as informed. Uh, we want to hear everything. Yeah, yeah, no, I wouldn't suggest that at all. I was just more just yeah. along with the, you know, an explanation of what, you know, what a comprehensive plan is, some information yeah. about, you know, what the existing conditions are so that everyone's kind of starting from the same point yeah. in terms of what they understand. 
great point. Yes. And then the other thing, um, I, I know, uh, Kevin, I think you promised them a short meeting and, and I don't want to don't want to abuse that. But one, one thing I do want to mention is that Lily and I would like to be able to provide uh, regular updates to the plan commission and whether that's uh, coming for, you know, five to 10 minutes on your agenda or if we just provide a report, whatever format that you would like, we can work with Kevin on that. If you want to just uh, a, an executive summary every time you, you meet, we can give you a briefing on, on what's transpired you know what information we have um, we of course love to do that so it gives you an opportunity to give additional feedback to us yeah uh, I think that's a great idea mr. Hopkins um, yeah the the development of the participation process seems to be highly developed and adapted to COVID um, but I want to focus on two other things that either you haven't talked about or maybe haven't worked on. Um, one is the notion of a truly comprehensive plan. Um, some of you may know me, but maybe not actually in this group. Um, but we have to be very careful about this concept. Um, each of the agencies from which you have a video also has a planning process. Most of them actually have plans. Those plans are almost never on the same cycle or in the same form as the city's plan. The, a, a second aspect of this here is that our current comprehensive plan has been amended, I, I'm gonna guess six to 10 times. And like the constitution, when we amend the plan, we don't rewrite it, we add to it. And that means that when we write a new comprehensive plan, we have to decide are we rewriting the bike plan? Are we re rewriting the climate action plan? Are we rewriting the downtown district plan? Are we rewriting the North Broadway plan? Are we rewriting the Philo Road plan? Are we rewriting our input to the last LRTP or TIP? Those are transportation plans in which the city participates in a direct and specific way. So the notion that seems to come across that we're going to get all of this together in this one fantastic process is not going to be true, okay? The process has to be open. We're, in an, we're not just in an open system as a, an ecosystem or an energy system. We're in an open system as a planning system. And so one of the things I think ought to be pretty early in the data process is getting together. Actually, I'd be interested to see, because I haven't really compiled it. I just, I have them stacked here on my shelf. But just get the, what constitutes the current comprehensive plan, meaning, you know, like the constitution, all the amendments, and, and start thinking about what does it mean to replace this? Because there's a lot of substance in this. A lot of it has legal standing. Okay. Um, now, we, a, another aspect of this is that um, one strategy to deal with this is to actually create an advisory group or whatever with a representative from some of these others. So for example, the bicycle plan, which is a city adopted amendment to the comprehensive plan, was created and advocated by a bunch of people who are really interested in bicycling. And the rest of the city, you know, basically didn't participate in that. And the content of that is not going to attract 
people to watch videos or anything else. But somehow we either have to say, okay, we're not replacing that. We've looked at it and we know how what we're creating links to that. And either we're going to adopt the new comprehensive plan as an amendment to the 2005 plan, which has all these other amendments already, or we're going to adopt the new plan and choose which other plans either are incorporated from the beginning or are amendments to it that we adopt as amendments. So, so there's, there's a bunch of complexity here that I haven't heard about. And um, so, so the idea of truly comprehensive, I mean, we're not being truly comprehensive because we're not going to do all these things over again. Um, and the, the other thing is we're not doing a capital improvements plan as part of the comp plan. That's a different item. It's still the city of Urbana and the city of Urbana is still going to do one on a different schedule and for a different purpose. Um, my guess is that public works may have other planning documents besides the CIP, CIP but I'm not sure about that. Um, so that, that's one whole thing that I think we need to do some work on, um, both in terms of process, but also in terms of what content and what data and what we're actually trying to accomplish. The, the second thing is that when we hold meetings with people in public, both as the commission and in the process of creating a plan, and I'm thinking at the moment of meetings from the two, five, 2005 process, what attracts interest in the community is the ability to react to ideas that matter to people. If you want to get somebody to come out to a meeting, propose a building on Lincoln Avenue. All right, we, we, we basically know the rate of that. If you want to get people from the, inter, um, from the mile and a half jurisdiction, propose the extension to Olympia Drive. If you want to get people in Southeast Urbana, deal with uh, Philo Road uh, development. Um, and, and actually not Philo Road, High Cross Road it, now used to be. Well, actually, you could get Southeast Urbana interested by talking about ideas for Philo Road. But talking in the abstract about goals and themes does not attract interest because what people are interested in is what are you actually talking about doing? Are you actually talking about building dense apartments on Lincoln Avenue? Are you actually talking about um, much more density of housing on Philo Road? What are you going to do with the uh, oversized retail on Philo Road? It, those are the things, when, when you go into a meeting in a community, and, and I, I realize we might not be physically going into communities, um, that's what people want to talk about. So I, I think we have to think about how do we create substance early enough in the process to engage people. And one of the ways to, in, to create substance is to look at the current plan. In other words, if there's a reason to change something in the current plan, one of the ways to discover that is if somebody thinks there is. Um, so so I, I think we need some, some ideas about how to put substance out in front of people. Okay, third thing. The faces on my screen are not representative of Urbana. Uh, the, the faces, it, well, it, it, and I, it, in this case, I'm talking about what we look like. Uh, I'm, I, don't, I know some of the geographic locations of where people live, uh, but I don't know all of them. So I don't, I'm not sure how representative we are geographically. We may actually be pretty good, I'm not sure. Um, but this suggests that going out and inviting people to participate 
by a group of people who, and I'm guessing from the names, I don't know him, but Lamont Peppers may be African American. Um, if, if the people going out and acting as the city, trying to engage the city, are not at all like this claimed thing we're trying to do of talking to everybody, it isn't going to happen. So it seems to me that you, you might want to think about creating, that is, assign people value, assign people status by asking them to serve on a body that is going to engage the substance of what's going on. And, and when you do that, you can get people to engage in a significant way, but you can choose them in order to be representatives. Um, it, it, but I think we need, we need to think a lot more about um, what we look like <laughs> uh, in, in, a, in terms of, and, and, and what actually interests people and gets them to, to engage. Um, if you ask them to serve on a task force or whatever, um, that gives them status. If you ask me to serve in a focus group, it gives me no status. Because I know what a focus group is designed to do. It's designed to find an arbitrary collection of the right distribution of people. If you appoint me to a task force, you're recognizing the substance of what I may be able to offer. So that, that's enough for now, I guess. That's, and that's really great. I would like to address just a couple of things and, and some of the, your comments are, are great. And, um, but I do want to say that we are starting to talk a little bit about what uh, that has been amended to the 2005 plan does need to be replaced. Um, for instance, we've already made plans with the Sustainability Advisory Commission to update the, the Climate Action Plan with the comprehensive plan. Um, so that's, we're going to be look, taking a look at more integrations. I don't think the bike plan is gonna be on that list. Um, as a, I'm one of those, those people who are really interested in bikes, so <laughs> totally understand. Um, so, so does so, that mean that the bike plan would be treated as an amendment? It is, yeah, it's an amendment of the comprehensive I, I mean, plan. Now, what I'm talking about how yeah. you're viewing, I mean, I like what you're saying. That is, you've thought about some plans and the organizations that sustain them, like the Sustainability Committee, is its own organization, task force, like I just described, that created this other plan. And I, I'm not sure whether the sustainability plan is an amendment or not. Um, I think, what, do you know? I think it is, but, it, okay. so they're, but regardless, they're planning on incorporating a new one into this comprehensive plan. But, and, I'm just saying that this is the beginning of figuring out which goes where and how we're going to do that. Yeah. And when you said they, the implication is that the sustainability committee is going to be doing that. Much like plan commission will be helping us with the comprehensive plan. So there is staff that okay. is involved and help. Yeah. yeah. So, so listen to what we're saying. We're saying the planning commission is going to help with the comprehensive plan. The sustainability committee is going to work on the sustainability plan, but we have one truly comprehensive plan. So we need to we need to deal with reality here. <laughs> I, I agree with you. In other words, I, and I, I understand that you've thought through some of this already. Uh, let but, me address the, the sustainability plan. Um, uh, Scott Tess came to us early on and said, he didn't want to have a duplicative process, that he really wants it to be part of our, our process. So we truly feel like one of the themes that will develop out of our community engagement will be on the issues that the sustainability plan will have in it. And so then, again, like Lily mentioned, you know, we'll then start you know, educating people with different information about the data that we have, et cetera. And we really see whether we call it I see what you're saying about a focus group, maybe the impression that, um, you know, the definition you have of a focus group. What we really see is interaction. It's not going to be 
um, you know, people just hearing a lot of information and giving us feedback, but not being involved. We really do want them involved and those that want to be and giving them those opportunities to participate at a different level as much as they want to participate, whether that's in um, you know, groups that are actually crafting the language for themes, et cetera. But again, we feel like it's going to be an organic process, you know, coming from uh, starting with this broader community engagement process. But I, I think it's important to invite individuals. That is, it's not just let people participate if they want to. It's to get me to do something. You have to ask me to do it. Mm -hmm. And I used to have a rule. Either the committee had to have power of its own or the executive with power met with the committee. That was my rule for 35 years of committees at the university. And, and those two kinds of committees, you know, the answer is yes, and we actually did things. Lots of other committees, nothing. <laughs> Well, and I, that's that's really great feedback. And I, I just wanted to address one other thing in that you're completely right about um, the substance. I will say that that's your second item. And I will say that there are certain things that do, that the community is asking us of right now that we are very committed to addressing. And city council has made sure that they've made it very clear to us that we should be addressing things, themes around equity that have really come up um, since the pandemic and in 2020. Um, they've been bubbling up for years and years and years, but this is something that we know that going into this, equity is going to be interwoven into all of it, of the comprehensive plan. Um, and it's something that we have, we, we've been tasked to do from city councils. So um, I just wanted to, I think what you said was really spectacular, but I do want to note that there is something that we, know that already we do have this substantive um, some task at hand. So th this may be an example where we could think about what I mean by substance. So we've been talking about equity for the, you know, 65 years I've been an adult. Um, and the idea that there's a theme is not actually what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is police practices, single family zoning, uh, neighborhoods. It, in other words, equity in the abstract is not an issue. But when it goes on the ground, the best of us liberal white homeowners don't look like we pretend to look when we talk about equity. And there's plenty of evidence of that in Minneapolis, in West Urbana, in Southeast Urbana, in Northeast Urbana. Um, so at some point, if we're going to talk about equity, we need to talk about some substantive, actionable, you know, a regulation, a zoning pattern, an investment. Mm -hmm. um, and until we get to that, it, it doesn't meet my standard for a committee. I couldn't agree more with some of that sentiment, um, but that's something we're going to try to address in the comprehensive plan. So sorry, this is fantastic, but I see that um, Mr. Allred, you have I something. I got it, I got it. <laughs> Mr. Allred. I just wanted to, echo what Mr. Hopkins is saying. I think that that's what the point I was trying to make. His point number two was the point I was trying to make in terms of using the kind of analysis that we have, will have done in terms of understanding background conditions to, you know, raise some of these critical issues that can be general issues or they can be issues specific to particular places um, as a way to get people involved and, and have a stake in the engagement process. So I, I, I do, I think that's a really good 
way to, to think about creating stakeholders, right? Creating people who are invested in giving us not just their opinion, but, you know, trying to, to work through whatever the issue is that they are passionate about. And, and Dustin, uh, I'm glad to hear that you've got a, a workshop next spring because for the 2005 plan, one of the ways we did that was indeed a workshop of grad students who created a lot of the deliberative substance uh, to work on. So that- yeah. We're gonna have a workshop next semester and then a workshop in the fall semester. Great, great. I think, um, and it's focused on equity, so it, it, you should be able to do all this. <laughs> Students yeah. should be able to do all this while sure. you encourage yeah. them. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's good discussion. Um, a couple of things that uh, my observations, I'll agree that the plan as it is, that I, one of the things I found least useful when I use the plan for specific, to try to evaluate specific proposals uh, is, are the goals. The goals are pretty malleable and you could fit just about any project into that, those goals um, somehow. And so I never found that as, as useful as the future land use stuff. Um, more generally, what do you want this area to look like in some, elongated time period. Um, and I think that kind of goes to what Mr. Hopkins was saying. You start, you tell people what you want to do to the neighborhood and they're going to start caring a lot. You tell them in the abstract what the, you know, Urbana wants more equity or whatever the goal happens to be. Um, it becomes esoteric or uh, not tangible. And so I think that's what I was hearing from Mr. Hopkins and I agree with that. Um, and I also agree with uh, the idea of a task force, um, you know, chosen um, to be your advisory board. Um, and of course, we'll be your advisory board too, but um, I think you'd, we need a lot broader participation than that. Um, and then the other thing is, as far as bringing together the, the, the custodians of the amendatory plans, we have had some luck with uh, joint sessions. We've had joint sessions with uh, the bicycle committee and the sustainability committee. Um, and I think, and so any, any one of those that you think makes sense in the context of whether you're gonna try to draw that plan into the new comprehensive plan or leave it as an amendment or change it or not change it, I think some joint sessions could be helpful. And to add to that, something that the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee is right now looking forward to doing with staff is a Z Vision Zero plan. And that's something that needs to be discussed with them about if this is gonna play a role in the comprehensive plan coming up. So I think you're completely spot on. Lily, can you uh, briefly explain what Vision Zero is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Vision Zero is um, it's a, a statement of working towards zero deaths for pedestrians and, and people riding bikes and people walking. Um, and in order to do that, it's not just wishful thinking and hoping, it's really to engineer and design safe streets where cars um, are cannot kill people or it's hard to kill people and then getting the education out there and the, the things that sometimes um, we prioritize education and encouragement more than we engineer streets to be safe. So Vision Zero really puts that engineering streets to be safe and that people for that people design um, forward. Lily, I'll, I'll just amend what you said slightly. Um, the, the goal is not only to reduce fatalities for, you know, for people walking and biking. Um, we also don't want people in cars to, to die. Um, yes, but yes. it's just, you know, dis, disproportionately the people that are dying happen to be the ones um, you know, being hit by cars when, you know, when they're walking or when they're riding a bike. So that's my, my slight, slight amendment. We, we care for all people. Equitable. Yeah, zero deaths. That's <laughs> yeah, uh, a couple of other quick points and then I'll be done. But uh, the, uh, the, the true conflicts, as uh, Lou mentioned, uh, that we've had are where the, where the university runs into the city. Um, and uh, most Lincoln Avenue being as, what was the phrase you used, the decisive edge or something like that last time? 
Um, it's a fancy planning term. Hadn't heard it before, but I like it. Um, so um, that would be one of, the, one of the focuses, I think, that I would be most interested in is when you're gathering your facts, talk about, we had some, some statements that the university is not growing. It is growing. It's growing not only in terms of students, but in footprint. Um, and those kind of issues uh, need to be front and at the forefront, I think. And also I'd like some context for the, Mr. Uh, Fell could probably speak to this the best, the radically different approaches to development and growth that Urbana and Champaign have. And you know, what, what does that mean for the city of Urbana? Um, I, uh, high rises will not be tolerated in Urbana. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> Four story buildings are barely tolerated, depending on where they are, right? Um, but that's, those are the, the two sort of macro issues that I would place at the top of our thinking in terms of trying to decide what we want to do next. And that's it. Uh, Tyler, I do want to point out that um, with the floor area ratio downtown being nine, you could build, say, an 18-story building on half of a lot downtown. So you could get relatively high rise. You could. <laughs> I'm living By right. By right. <laughs> Actually, that's an example of a very specific thing that ought to be considered, which is that our, I think it's R6, I can't remember. Not R6, yeah, I think it's R6. Or maybe it's B, whatever the um, Downtown business. new building on uh, Lincoln and University Southeast corner is. The oh, yeah. zoning has no height limit. And the FAR is such, I can't remember what it is, that um, they could have built a really tall building. And one of our, I can't remember how we dealt with it. It was either a special use or a PUD or something that we were able to limit that while permitting it. And we noted that that was an example of a zoning category we needed was either to change, to create a height limit that actually worked for that zoning category or to create a new category that worked for the locations in which we currently have that zoning category. Now this gets into the details, but that's what I've been arguing for. So yeah. Well, and and Lou, I I agree with you, and I agree with much of what what you've said um, tonight. Maybe even all of it. <laughs> um, uh, I think. Thing. Yeah, I think I think we will get into we'll be able to get into a lot of these details as we you know as we go along. But um, but yeah, it's it's good to hear you. Um, state some of the things that I think we, we've been having nation uh, conversations about, um, but I think you articulated it much better than say I have to this point. Yeah, and I thought of one more thing, I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, another thing I'd like to see in your analysis phase, I think, is some assessment of the things that we've tried in the recent past, how successful have they been? Um, and I'm thinking design review um, being set for the MOR and for the Busey Corridor and for HUNA um, and uh, also the bicycle, the bicycle stuff, it have, have the sharrows and the, and the uh, dedicated lanes and so forth, increased ridership. Now ridership is increased, but there could be, you know, could be related. But I, certainly the farther you get from campus, I don't think bicycle riding has increased. There's a lot of missing infrastructure the farther what you get from campus too. So that's and that's a part of the but that's a really great point and absolutely that needs to be addressed. I think we should also throw in things like the downtown plan into sure. the, right. in that and and parts of the boneyard plan. So yeah, you're completely this is this is a fabulous conversation, of course. I know I, I was gonna say it, but I'm gonna I now I'm gonna start gushing it. Oh, but you guys no. are great. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, and I will offer this, um, I'm kind of in the data field, um, and I uh, program and, and write code and stuff and do data analytics. And so if you need somebody to pound on some data, yes, um, I might have a free Sunday. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, um, the one of the, so I know I, I said this earlier in the presentation, but one of the amazing things about um, doing the comprehensive plan in house is the staff and how there's a lot of really, really talented and hardworking experts in a lot of different fields here. It's a small crew, you know, two string staff level, but it's definitely something that has a lot of um, really, really talent talented people, but that goes for the community as well. So yes, and also Dustin Allred, thank you so much for the, the class time. Lou Hopkins, thank you so much for all the advice. Everybody, you know, everybody's full of talent. Andrew Fell, Jane, um, Chinchi, of course, all of you are very helpful. And yeah, I would love to meet with you on a Sunday and <laughs> have some help on this. Well, I would invite you for coffee, but we can't do that. So um, just uh, set, set something up and I'll be happy to have a discussion. Well, this was extremely helpful as we knew it would be for us and to give us guidance. And uh, we really appreciate all your comments. And we'll do a, uh, we have a staff working group coming up here next week. This information we can certainly uh, vet with them as well and get their thoughts. And it is a work in progress. That's what we said. So um, don't think that things are set in concrete because they're not. We're, uh, we're, Definitely, uh, you saw that roadmap with the curves in it. Well, the, the, there's curves in that road for a purpose. If you come across an obstacle, um, you know, you take a detour and we evaluate things and, and, and approach it differently. Great, thank you. Uh, anybody have anything else they want to add at this point in time? No? Well, thank you. Very, very nice uh, presentation. Very nice discussion. I'm excited. Um, and. Uh, so thanks for this study session. I'm sure there'll be more uh, city staff can work out if it's a staff report section of the uh, regular meetings that you could give a, a, an up periodic update that might be most efficient. Um, and so if there's nothing else on this, then we don't have any other items on the agenda and therefore we are adjourned.